What's up guys, this is Rob Rivera at Animus Visual Reviews. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm realizing that up to this point, I have not done any kind of introduction to what I do or who I am. I am a filmmaker and commercial producer and one man band out of Tampa, Florida, uh, specializing in music videos, commercials, ads, etc. I'm also a gear collector, a gear whore, as my friends like to call me. Um, so I also rent equipment here in the Tampa area. So if you're a production and you're ever in this area, please reach out. I may have what you're looking for. All that being said, I'm back for another video. This time again, I am thanking my friends at Moment Global for sending me a Moment 99 V-mount battery, which I am very excited to review. Um, these are very small portable batteries that I'm uh, very happy with and they have some new colors, which is sweet. So we'll go ahead and get into those today. All right, so I did mention this is gonna be a battery review for the Moment 99, which is a portable, small V-mount battery. But at the same token, I wanted to do a Komodo rig breakdown, which is exactly where that battery fits into this whole thing. So I'm excited to break down my entire rig. Uh, there's a couple shots I've already shown. I'm gonna break this down right now and go through each piece. And then of course, talk about how the Moment 99 fits into this rig. All right, guys, so without further ado, I'm ready to go over all the pieces. The rig has been broken down. I'm gonna try to remember every single thing and piece that goes into this. I'm gonna leave links in the description below showing where you can get each one of these pieces. So let's go ahead and start with the actual Komodo body itself. To me, it would be too much of a pain in the ass to actually take this whole thing apart, including everything that I have on it right now. So um, this is actually mostly the Condor blue cage. Uh, I've kept the left hand side as well as the top rail since it is a NATO rail that you can slide on top handles. I'm a fan of top handles so I kept these two pieces because of the functionality. This is also a NATO rail as well as it has RE locating pins and rosettes in case you want to do um, a shoulder rig for example. Also I kept the base plate. Um, Condor Blue base plate has a ton of quarter and three eighth, I think it's three eighth. Uh, mounting points on it, so I just attached this pretty much perma glued small rig plate onto it, which is Manfrotto 501, which is what my Sattler tripod uses. Um, so I like quick release. This to me makes it a quick release in case I don't need a whole V mount rig. Um, I can just take it off and just power it through the normal batteries or using this tilt plate that we'll talk about next. Um, so this keeps it very easy and fast to be able to remove off the rails and place onto a tripod just like this body only. So another reason I selected the Condor Blue Cage is because it has a support foot that attaches the Canon Speed Booster from RF to EF. Most of my lenses that I use are EF based. So I have a ton of EF lenses. I started on a Canon 5D Mark III and I pretty much own uh, everything in EF and I convert it to EF if I can. The only exceptions are really the FD lenses that I have. But that said, I'm a fan of the Canon Speed Booster because it does change uh, your field of view to look more like a full frame camera. Most of the cameras I enjoy using are full frame. Um, and for me, this is pretty much a given. And some people are just not a fan and don't believe in full frame and that's fine. Me personally though, again, I'm a big fan of full frame field of view, especially when you get into tighter spaces and you need a wider lens, it becomes harder with crop sensor cameras. Also. This Komodo has a two times crop in 4K mode, which this helps with a ton. So that's why I prefer having the speed booster pretty much perma glued onto the front of this Komodo here. So this is the Tilta V mount battery plate for the Komodo. As you can see, it's well loved. I use this. I pretty much never take this off to be honest, except for a rare occasion when I actually fly the Komodo on a gimbal. I'll take the plate off and just use a regular Canon battery on the back of the Komodo, etc., etc. Reasons why I like this, and to note, I think this is probably the main reason this is important, is because once you attach this to the back of the Komodo, and of course some of you are very familiar with these things, but um, it's very solidly locked on there, and also it has 14.8 Limo port outputs, uh, which I use this custom cable which I don't know if it's custom per se, it was at the time that I asked for it, but this was made by Alvin's Cables, but basically I had requested to get a specific cable that goes from the Limo port 
uh, power into my port keys monitor, which I'll talk about in a few, but that would be my BM5 WR, which has Komodo control with this cable. The other great thing about using this cable specifically is that as far as I know, and feel free to correct me in the comments, but uh, the issue with frying your SDI ports comes specifically by using the DTAP port uh, as far as the connection failing to make contact on, I believe it's positive before negative. So it's rare, but it could happen, except for if you're using a Lima port, that is not a problem. So this is why I like powering it through this. And to be honest, I've never followed the procedure, right if you're watching, disregard this whole next section. Never followed the process of plugging the power first, but I've always used this for powering my monitor since I got this camera. I have not had an SDI issue whatsoever, and I've had it for going on a year and a half now. So very important for me, at least, to use this cable for powering my port keys monitor. Um, this is a just a regular SDI cable. Um, I believe, God, it's, it's Johnson's cables or something like that. Um, I'm a fan of it. It looks cool. It's red, red camera, sweet. I'll leave a link down below, but um, have had zero issues with this cable whatsoever. It is a 12G SDI cable, which is what's recommended to use in a Komodo. So just so I can start getting this thing put together, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about this small rig swivel mount, nothing special about it. I'll leave the link below. It's just an Ari locating mount. It holds pretty strong. You can adjust here with the uh, hex tool. So very simple. I use that for my port keys monitor and it pretty much stays on my camera 24 um, seven. That attaches to this handle, uh, which I actually just recently got from small rig. I believe it is a newer design. Um, I had the old one that was uh, pretty much all metal, but I do prefer the rubber grips on the bottom of this. It has the RA locating pins on the front, which is how I attach this. And that prevents it from rotating left or right on you when you're moving your monitor around, it holds in pretty tight. Uh, this is a NATO rail, which will then slide onto this NATO rail here in the top of the Komodo, and then lock that in. I'll leave a link down below for this one. This handle has changed a million times for me. I own like 17 different handles, mostly small rig, just to see what works best for me. Um, it's a looks thing, it's a comfort thing, it's um, just whatever I need to actually plug into it. I do like this one because it has cold shoe mounts on the front uh, top and the front two sides, as well as on the rear, I guess that's rear top and rear back. And it has an assortment of, of course, quarter inch and an RA locating pin on the top if you wanted to put your monitor here, for example. This is probably my favorite handle I've used out of all the ones that I've purchased before. It locks on real solid. Before I forget, I wanna talk about this little piece, which is a bright tangerine. It's just a piece of their cage for the right-hand side. I like this one because A, it looks cooler. B, I have their side plate, which allows you to expand the mounting over on this side quite a bit. It's just a good side plate overall. Uh, I probably would have gotten all their other stuff, but to be honest, it's pretty pricey and I'm not super cheap, but at the same time, the Condor Blue does what I needed to do for the price. Moving right along, let's go ahead and talk briefly on this because I will probably do a review on this if I haven't already. I've done other Porky's reviews, you can check them out here. Um, this is the BM5WR. I love this monitor. There's some people prefer small HD. Um, there's, you know, different opinions, of course, like everything else with gear. Uh, I'm very happy with it. It's super bright. Um, it's all metal, which I'm a huge fan of because I don't have to worry about this whole situation coming off here at the bottom. It has these two divots here that allow it to keep it from rotating uh, on its axis, which is great. And it controls the Komodo wirelessly. No, not fully wirelessly. You still need image through SDI, but it allows the Komodo to record at least. You can change the settings, which is awesome. And again, with this cable, you can power it. And so far it's been trouble free as far as the SDI port issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw this in. My preference is to keep the monitor kind of as low as possible, kind of like the big body reds that have the monitor attached at the top of the camera. I do like a top handle, so I kind of attach it to whatever top handle I'm using at the time. Um, I'll show you how this is plugged in. So again, this goes into one of the 14.8 volts and boom. This is rotatable also, which was great. And then I run this past and into the back here of the monitor. And this is their own 
four pin aviation, I believe it's called cable. I haven't had any issues powering it this way. I don't follow the procedure of um, SDI. I believe it's you gotta have power running first before you plug your SDI in. And then when you're finished, you're supposed to take your SDI out first and then power. So to follow up, we'll go ahead and take the SDI cable into the back of the port keys and run that all the way to the bottom rear, which is the SDI port on the Komodo. And as you can see, I have a little extra slack in these cables to which I use this little friend right here. This is a sprig. It comes in a little pack, I believe of like 10 of them. I'll leave the link down below. Uh, but basically you can plug these into a quarter inch hole anywhere on your cage, wherever you have that extra space. I like to put it right here over by the top. And then basically what it does is it assists in cable management. You can just tuck your cables in there. It's actually, as you can tell, fairly tight and it holds onto them pretty good. I can't even get it in. Pause. There we go. And this is still very front heavy. So we'll go ahead and tackle the battery next. The reason we're all here is this amazing moment, a 99 watt battery. I'll get all kinds of into this, but for now I'm just gonna go ahead and slide it on to the battery plate. There we go. Boom, it's locked in. So uh, one of the main reasons why I love this battery or these batteries in this size is because they fit so neatly on the back of the Komodo. It's just a little bit off, uh, but not enough for me to worry about. To be honest, this is probably one of the best fitting batteries uh, in this size on the tilt to plate where your battery is horizontal. Very happy with this battery. We'll get deeper into it. So next up, I'll wanna go ahead and attach the rail. These are also Condor Blue rails. I believe they're PPSH, which is also reminiscent of a weapon back in World War II. Could be wrong. But anyway, um, similar design on the barrel for venting. And um, I don't know, I just like these. Um, I think they probably cuts the weight some by having the slots on them. Not a whole ton, I'm sure. Uh, but I just like the look and yeah, that's why I got these rails. So these get attached to this small rig base plate. This base plate is a little bit of a anomaly. So basically regular Manfrotto 501 plates do not fit on here because they have a tab that do not allow it to go past this little knob. So you even if you push this all the way, the regular 501 plates don't go through. However, small rig plates and other plates that uh, do not have that tab in the center, which is a safety tab, will actually slide through all the way as long as you unlock it. I'm not 100% sold on it because of that issue. Um, I have another type of base plate that I was using before and I have a few others that I kind of rotate through depending on how I'm feeling. But for right now, I'm using this base plate and yeah, we'll go ahead and insert the rods. So on the one side, there is only one tightening knob on this one. And on the other side, there are two. You tighten here, you tighten there. Cool. So the main reason I'm using this type of base plate versus something a little bit more sophisticated, expensive, etc., is again, the versatility of quick release. So like I said, right now, this is a complete rig without needing rails. If I'm not mounting anything on rails, I can easily use the camera just like this with a lens. But of course, when I mount, uh, for example, the mat box, uh, or if I wanted to mount a V-mount on rails, or in this case, this lens support, which we'll talk about next, then obviously you'll want to put the rails on. So it's easy as just taking the plate, sliding it on. And here I go talking about easy and it's a pain. There we go. All right, boom. So now it's locked. As you can see, the safety lock keeps it from sliding out. And then you just lock this tab right here. Boom. And now it's not going anywhere. And bam. So um, just like that, if I need to take the rails off again, just unlock and slide it out. And now you're able to go ahead and put the Komodo directly on a tripod without the use of rails. If I need to fly a gimbal or something like that, it makes it quicker to be able to strip it down. So as I mentioned, this right here is just a regular small rig lens support. So I don't use this all the time, but when I have heavier lenses or when I use an anamorphic setup, which is a heavy and long setup, um, I tend to put this on pretty adjustable and it has a good height range. Uh, it attaches right to the 15 millimeter rods. So I'll go ahead and 
insert those, boom. So for right now, we'll just leave it around here just so I can insert the lens next. So next up, I'll talk about this, which is my Tilta run stop handle. Um, so there's been some beef with this, especially if you're using it to actually control the Nucleus M. That was my original thought, but what happens is there's this cowl button here that you end up accidentally pressing when you hold on to the handle. I'm not sure why it's there, but basically this forces your nucleus to recalibrate your lens, which is a pain. So I don't use it for that purpose because of that. However, it is a very versatile handle just in general because it has a quick release rotation. So if you press that button, you can rotate on a NATO rail. And this is what I attach to this bright tangerine side rail. And press the safety tab, boom, lock it in. So it's a ratcheting lock and you have to pull it back and then rotate it so that you, in case you run into the actual body on the side. Anyways, it's locked in now. Um, I usually have it in my mid body. It has this strap, which you can adjust to keep it tight. I mean, you can literally hold the whole rig with just this one handle. It's very sturdy and solid. It doesn't wobble, it doesn't shake. And again, the fact that it rotates so easily and only when you press the button. Um, I haven't ran into the issue of accidentally pressing the rotation button when I haven't needed to, so that's great. But it helps with doing shots, for example, where I need to have the camera straight up or if I wanna do a high angle. Very, very cool. I have the run stop cable and I do press record on it when it's attached. Um, however, I believe you do need power, which I actually have a slim MPF battery in here, which I've had forever, but I don't use. So um, yeah, it's just a handle as far as I'm concerned and the way I use it. So moving on to the final pieces. Um, in the preview, I showed my new to me Leica lenses. Um, I have the 24, I just got the 35, the 50. I adapted this um, Leica lens using a, this is a I don't even know how to pronounce it. I'll leave a link down below for this if you have Leica lenses. It's probably not the best way to do this. You should probably go to like, you know, Simod or Litex and actually get the mount changed over to EF if you're gonna do it. Um, but to be honest, I'm actually surprised by how tight this locks into this. And um, yeah, I adapt it with this for now. To be honest, I haven't used them yet, but there's very little wobble on this. So I haven't really tested much of the Leica. I just know that everything I see with Leica shots look awesome. And so I got my own set. I'm missing the 19 because it's super expensive, but this is the current setup. And as you can see, I could probably get the lens support just to touch it. All right, so moving on to the last piece. Um, I want to dedicate a little bit of time on here. This is a bright tangerine. It's Clash 138 is what's on here. Um, I remember buying it as a Misfit Atom matte box. This is pretty pricey stuff. I piece it together because I'm a cheap ass and Bright Tangerine isn't supporting me yet. Bright Tangerine, I'm talking to you. If you wanna send me some stuff to review, I'd be happy to. But anyway, I bought each piece differently as way as I, as I found it. And in essence, I went to eBay and picked up three or four parts that were on eBay selling for like, I don't know, 50% of the price. And then I bought most of the matte box open box directly on Bright Tangerine's website. Um, to be honest, I just started using a matte box. I didn't buy into the hype of, oh, you need a matte box for everything, for your clients to be impressed by your work, blah, blah, blah. So I've been doing this for years without a matte box, just fine. But to be honest, because the Komodo doesn't have any built-in NDs and um, I'm kind of just tired of screwing 82 millimeter NDs into all of my lenses, I decided for the matte box. Um, while I'm on that topic, I have a Revar Cine variable ND on there, which is pretty cool. As you can see, possibly from up top, I'll take this off so you can see it better. But there's basically a circular polarizer that basically you spin, boom. And that uh, working together with the linear polarizer in the front is basically a variable ND. That was also fairly pricey. I believe it was like 600 or $700 for the combo of these two. But again, I want, I'm used to variable NDs and I wanted to have something that's quick uh, to change and changing filters, for example, between ND stops is a little time consuming. So uh, this worked very well. I saw another review for this setup from Robert Machado. Shout out to him. I've learned a lot from him and his shoots with uh, Sony's. 
and I uh, saw his review and I saw that there was very little color shifting so I picked it up and it was awesome. So yeah, let me just go ahead and install this um, into the camera because of course that is what I'm going to be doing with each item. Okay, we're going to skip all this in the edit. And this rubber piece, yeah, this bellows basically wraps up against the lens, which maintains any light from hitting the actual glass and bouncing back into your lens. Before I had this, I tried to use it without it. Totally doesn't work. There's reflections that hit the back of the glass that show up in your images and it looks terrible. So anyways, this is very much needed if you're gonna get one of these setups. Um, so that's pretty much it for the walkthrough, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, please, Leave me a comment down below as far as these, and uh, I will get back with you guys. Uh, for now, I wanna go ahead and talk about what we are here to discuss. So, uh, the main features of this battery, obviously besides the fact that it's 99 watt hours in this size, is in essence the two DTAP ports that it has here on either side, which is good because they don't interfere with each other. You also have these tally lights here that'll tell you when you have power. Uh, this one right now needs a charge, obviously. Uh, this one, as you can see, also needs a charge, but the point is that it will give you a indicator, of course, of how much battery power you have left in these. Very useful. In addition, and this is something that's different from other batteries of this size from other manufacturers that I also own, but it has a dual USB out, which is great because you can use this to power, for example, the Momen Matrix 600, which is USB-C powered. You can go ahead and run a USB A to C cable into the Momen unit to then get power to your wireless. Likewise, you can use this to charge a cell phone. I actually brought a cable for USB-C to A so I can charge my phone right now while I'm talking. So you simply just plug it into the battery and the phone and there you go, it's charging. It's not a fast charger, it's just a regular, I believe, 2.4 volt charge. Very cool that you can power different things using these two USB ports. Obviously this could be used as an emergency power bank if you needed you know power on the field that said there's really not a whole ton to be said about it um, again I'm really in love with the fact that it does fit the Komodo so well on the back with the tilted plate it's almost like it was meant for it this new color is so cool I'm really into the fact that they are coming out with new colors they have obviously the standard black one which is one of the ones they sent me as well as a camouflage one and just a plain gray one which again is just a different way to differentiate your batteries on set and make sure that you know nobody's confusing your batteries with theirs so i do like the fact that it also adds a level of you know flair and uniqueness to your gear again they're very portable they're very light uh they can still power for example an aperture light uh maybe a 120d or a 200 so we'll do another video on how to use these for your favorite led lights and um it should be a fun one i believe right now these are the black one is on sale for about $150. These are a little more in the two colors, the gray and the camouflage. Um, I believe they're $180 right now. Obviously all this is subject to change is just the current price. These are not necessarily red approved batteries, so you will get the unapproved battery message if you're using a Komodo, but obviously these can be used on whatever camera you adapt. Sony's can go from USB A to C and charge that way. Um, you can use DTAP to USB C and charge that way, or a DTAP to dummy battery. I've used this on my Pocket 4K, Pocket 6K with a V mount plate, so it's very versatile and obviously can be used for multiple different things, not just the Komodo. But again, this is just why I specifically prefer these smaller size batteries because they fit right in and they're just not crazy expensive. That's it for this review of the Moment 99. Uh, they're great batteries. I absolutely recommend them, actually approved them. I wish I had a con, I don't know, I wish they were bigger, but that would defeat the whole purpose. So I don't really have any cons with this. Um, maybe if they were red approved, that would be sweet, but that's a very expensive process and uh, time consuming. So I totally understand. Outside of that, if you have any questions about any of this, whether it be the gear, uh, or the batteries, please leave me a comment down below. If you like this type of content, let me know. Subscribe, like, all that good stuff. I'm gonna leave a link down below for the battery specifically. This is really 
I mean, the biggest sell point of, um, of this whole video. I'm like super happy with these and I'm glad they sent me two of them. If you have any questions on the batteries themselves or usability, power, uh, again, I'm gonna be doing another review video using these to power LED lights and pretty much push them to the limit, see how long they will last and how powerful 